Wider road signs welcome you to Norwich, a fine city. The phrase is attributed to George Borrow from his book Lavengro. The book was published in 1851 and I'm going to read the relevant passages and show current views of what George Borrow was describing in those passages. A fine old city truly is that. View it from whatever side you will. But it shows best from the east, where the ground, bold and elevated, overlooks the fair and fertile valley in which it stands. At the foot of the heights flows a narrow and deep river, with an antique bridge communicating with a long and narrow suburb, flanked on either side by rich meadows of the brightest green, beyond which spreads the city the fine old city, perhaps the most curious specimen at present extant of the genuine old English town. Yes, there it spreads from north to south with its venerable houses its numerous gardens its thrice twelve churches and its mighty mound, which if tradition speaks true, was raised by human hands to serve as the grave heap of an old heathen king, who sits deep within it, with his sword in his hand, and his gold and silver treasures about him. There is a grey old castle upon the top of that mighty mound, and yonder, rising three hundred feet above the soil, from among those noble forest trees, Behold, that old Norman masterwork, that cloud-encircled cathedral spire. Now who can wonder that the children of that fine old city are proud of her? George Borrow has city streets named after himself and his book. He was born at Dumpling Green, which is now part of Deerham and this was his early home. He was educated in part at Norwich Grammar School, where he was fond of study but not school, having thrashings from the headmaster, Edward Valpy. George Borrow became famous for travelling, but for a while he lived on Willow Lane, not in that modern housing, but through the arch, where can be found the house in which he lived. It wasn't always good things that he said about Norwich, describing in his first publication Norwich people as unsightly, ugly and with flat features, for which his book was burned by the Norwich Subscription Library. 